the Senate will now be moving to the urgency motion. The President has also uh, received the following letter from Senator Hume. Uh, dear President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I give notice that today I propose to move that in the opinion of the Senate, the following is a matter of urgency. The need for the Senate to reaffirm its commitment to the Coalition's personal income tax plan that upon full implementation will mean around 95 per cent of taxpayers are expected to face a marginal tax rate of no more than 30 per cent, which Australians need now more than ever thanks to faster bracket creep and greater pressures under Labor's cost of living crisis. Signed, Senator Hume. Is the proposal supported? Uh, thank you very much, Senators. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly. Uh, I call Senator Hume. Thank you, uh, uh, Deputy President. We hear a lot in this chamber around the debate around stage three tax cuts, but it's important to understand exactly what this means because these tax cuts have to be understood in the context of the other two stages that preceded them. The former coalition government passed the personal income tax plan to deliver lower, simpler and fairer taxes for working Australians. Now, these are legislated tax cuts. They are reflected not only in the coalition's budgets but also in Labor's pre-election costings and in the October budget last year. Now, the final stage of the personal income tax plan will commence in 2024, on the 1st of July. And at that time, 30, the 37 per cent tax bracket will be abolished entirely and the 32.5 per cent tax rate will be reduced to 30 per cent. Now, once fully implemented, this means that 95 per cent of Australian taxpayers are expected to face a marginal tax rate of no more than 30 per cent. This is a significant reform. It's been such a long time coming. Lower, simpler, fairer taxes. Under the personal income tax plan, an apprentice on $60,000 would pay $1,455 less in tax every year from the 1st of July 2024, whereas an experienced tradie on, say, $80,000 would pay $1,955 less tax every year from the 1st of July. 2024. More money in the pockets of working Australians is more important than ever, particularly now as we look down the barrel and buckle under the weight of Labor's cost of living crisis. More money to help Australians with the expenses like mortgage repayments, like groceries, like energy bills, all of which are going up under this government. And while those opposite would like to talk about just about anything else, this is the number one issue for ordinary Australians right now. Last April, the Treasurer said that this is a full-blown cost of living crisis. He used the words full-blown cost of living crisis. That was last April. Now, since that time, inflation is at its highest point in 30 years, real wages are going back backwards and are forecast to continue to go backwards for the entire term of this parliament. And interest rates are at their highest point in over a decade. However, even with these facts in front of them, the government still will not admit that they are presiding over a real cost of living crisis while they are in government. Last week at the Cost of Living Committee, Woolworths gave evidence that Australians are beginning to change their consumer behaviour and that they are having increasing demands from their charity partners for up to 20 per cent more in food donations. Customers are beginning to leave things at the checkout on the aisle uh, uh, rather than putting them into their bags because their food bills are going up. At the same time, we know energy prices are going up. Can you name an Australian that hasn't received a bill that has said that their energy prices are going up, their electricity prices are going up, their gas prices are going up? Ordinary Australians are feeling the pinch. This is despite a promise, a commitment by those opposite to reduce electricity prices by $275, a number they will not even say now that they are in government. They will not repeat the words $275. And that's because energy bills are skyrocketing 
under the, skyrocketing under their watch. Just last year, late last year, Anthony, uh, the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has promised a $230 reduction in energy prices. And again, another promise that has disappeared already. Last week, the Cost of Living Committee heard from the energy regulator that, in fact, investment in energy, is, energy projects is disappearing entirely disappearing entirely, threatening long-term supply, and its massive interventions in the market are actually causing prices to go up, not to go down. This is a problem for all Australians, but the biggest one, of course, is Labor's addiction to spending. Because Labor's addiction to spending, the $23 billion of extra money that was spent just in the October budget alone, is one of the reasons why the RBA is being forced to over and over and over again raise interest rates, affecting mortgage holders, affecting, uh, affecting borrowers, affecting ordinary Australians every day. They are feeling this in their pocket. We know that inflation, that interest rates are both going to go higher under Labor because Philip Lowe told us that they will, and Australians will pay more. In this environment, a personal income tax plan, the Coalition's personal income tax plan, is more important than ever. It is more important for ordinary Australians to keep more of their own money under a simpler, fairer and, uh, and, and under a simpler, fairer tax system. Thank you, Senator Hume. I call Senator Walsh. Uh, thank you very much, Acting Deputy President, and I too rise to speak on this urgency motion before the Senate today, submitted by Senator Hume on uh, tax and the cost of living. Uh, and first, let me say that our priority when it comes to tax reform is ensuring that multinationals pay their fair share of tax here in Australia. Uh, multinational corporations will pay an extra billion dollars in tax as we clamp down on excessive deductions and profit shifting to other countries. Uh, and cracking down on multinational tax avoidance is absolutely key uh, to our government's revenue agenda. Uh, and so too, of course, is cracking down on the waste and the rorts that have contributed to a trillion dollars of debt left to us by those opposite without any economic dividend to show for it. It is the waste and the rorts of those opposite uh, that we are setting about fixing. Uh, it is the waste and the rorts of those opposite that have left a hole in the budget that it's been left to us to repair. The sports rorts. The car, the car park rorts, the airport land rorts, remember those, um, the rorts of a former government who spent taxpayer money like it was a Liberal Party slush fund. And just stop to imagine uh, where we'd be today if those opposite had actually thought about how to invest in the Australian people and in the Australian economy instead of in their own failed re-election plans. Imagine if they had invested in any forward-looking plans to address any of the structural economic causes of the cost of living crisis today. If they had invested, for example, in renewable energy generation and transmission. If they had invested in manufacturing and securing our supply chains if they'd invested in the security of Australian women and their ability to participate fully in our economy. Imagine if those opposite had spent 10 years investing in social and affordable housing, where we would be today in the cost of living crisis affecting Australians. Imagine if they'd invested in the skills crisis that is holding business back right now today and holding Australians back as well from achieving their full potential. The former government was asleep at the wheel. They were asleep on climate and energy. They were asleep on jobs and skills. They were asleep on securing manufacturing supply chains. They were asleep on understanding how gender equality drives economic growth. And they were asleep on housing supply, absolutely asleep at the wheel. And so much could have been done to strengthen our economy for the future in the last decade. So much should have been done. And the fact that so little was done to position our country, not just for the challenges ahead, but actually for the opportunities too, is a complete dereliction of responsibility. 
You trashed any notion of good government. You trashed any notion of good economic management. And it, it is Australians who are paying the price now for a decade of missed opportunities and messed up priorities under the former government. What we are doing is getting on with delivering the meaningful investments that Australians need, that maximise our economic impact and that meet the needs of the community today. We understand that cost of living is hitting Australians hard. And so our economic plan is a direct and deliberate response to the challenges facing the economy that you left behind. And that's why one of the very first acts of this government was to successfully argue for an increase to the minimum wage to keep pace with inflation. And we are proud to be getting wages moving once again in this country after a decade of flat wages brought by those opposite. And our October budget focused on cost of living relief that didn't put extra pressure on inflation. And that's the most important thing. Tackling inflation Order, is so our is. top priority. And that, of course, has been noted by the rating agencies reaffirming our AAA credit rating, pointing to our responsible economic management. We are delivering the economy that Australians need. We are getting wages moving and we are dealing with the cost of living pressures that you left behind. Uh, thank you, Senator Walsh. I'm about to call Senator McKim, but I just will note that Senator Hume was heard in silence, which is the convention of good practice in the Senate. And I'll ask for order from senators. Senator McKim. Thank you uh, very much. Well, here we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Food, petrol, medicine, transport, rent, electricity, insurance, mortgage, repayments, you name it, the price of everything is going up. However, while workers Students, mortgage holders, small businesses are all getting smashed. Corporations are making record profits. Real wages are going backwards, but company profits are at record highs. Inequality is increasing before our very eyes. And yet here we are today, here are the Liberals today, asking the Senate to endorse a $9,000 a year tax cut for billionaires. I mean, how out of touch can you get? Tax cuts for the super rich that will further fuel inflation, that will further fuel inequality and, making the, and make the cost of living crisis worse for everyone except, except for those who are already very wealthy. But that's what you expect from the Liberals. But the real issue here is the Australian Labor Party, once the party of the workers, but now just another political party for the asset-owning class. Labor senators know stage three is bad policy. Labor has actually never once run the argument that stage three tax cuts are good policy, never once, because they know that they're not. They only supported the stage three tax cuts for the very wealthy to neutralise the issue to give them the best chance to win the election. Make no mistake about this, Labor's policy on the stage three tax, cut, tax cuts boils down to this. They're not going to do the right thing because they promised to do the wrong thing. That's Labor's policy. They would rather turbocharge inequality and, for that matter, gender inequality than change their position. A quarter of a trillion dollars in tax cuts, three quarters of which go to the top 20 per cent of income earners, and twice as much of the benefit goes to men than to women. If Labor had the political will, they could unlegislate the legislated tax cuts. The numbers are there in this parliament, in this Senate and in the House, if Labor was prepared to do the right thing by this country. But they're not. That's why the stage three tax cuts are no longer the Liberal stage three tax cuts, they are Labor's stage three tax cuts. Because if they're not prepared to ditch them, then they're going to have to own them. Senator Hughes. Acting Deputy President. Well, the last six months have been interesting 
embarrassing at times, but I really do think today is seeing a new low bar being set. It is just extraordinary, both from question time and some of the contributions that have been uh, made by those now in government, where they are in almost denial of a cost of living crisis that the assistant minister or assistant treasurer, I should say, has now declared that the RBA is going to stop raising interest rates, so the crisis is over. No need to, to look here. The constant blaming, whining, carry on, looking back to the past, passing the buck as Australians continue to feel the pinch more and more every single day. I think it is really time for those opposite to grow up, understand they're in government, that that means actually making decisions that are going to be better for Australians, not worse. Obviously, that memo got missed uh, because every single Australian since the Albanese government has come to power is now worse off. And the, the, tax, this, this tax cuts under stage three that were legislated, that we're they're, they're almost, not quite, almost at Voldemort's status, like the 275, the number that shall not be named. They're not quite at Voldemort's status, but they are getting very, very close, because we know 97 times we were told power bills were going to go down by $275, where we know they're going to go up, and they're probably going to go up by more than $275. So the stage, stage three tax cuts are going to be so required for all those tradies that are going to see almost 2,000 in 80, on 80,000, almost 2,000 back in their pocket each year because they're going to need it because their mortgages have gone up eight times since this Labor government came to power. Now, if you compare that to the Liberal government, where there was one increase, <coughs> we now have interest rates and a cash rate that are the highest it's been in 10 years. But we're not seeing this government pull any policy levers that are moving towards reducing inflation, because every step they take, every move they make, they are making a bad situation worse. I know I could be a little lyricist there, Senator Scar, but every time they make a decision, they're making the situation worse. We've got these Frankenstein energy legislation that came in last year that everyone, including the ACCC, has said time and time and time again, this is going to push up power prices. Well, guess what, guys? That contributes to inflationary pressures, which then leads to the RBA taking action on interest rates. There is actually some rhyme and reason to why these things occur. They do follow suit. And this new uh, carbon tax, because we know the, the Labor Party is just obsessed with the carbon tax, now proposing one at three times the level that the Gillard government tried to legislate and pull in, into place, the impact that that's going to have I just am amazed that those in government are absolutely, completely unaware the impact this is going to have on businesses, on manufacturing. Look around this building. We're, we're all sitting in a building here. It's got an awful lot of concrete in it. Concrete uses a product called clinker to be produced. It is about to all go offshore because if this carbon tax comes into place, there will be no Australian cement manufacturers. That means we lose our sovereignty, we put ourselves at risk. One of the most common products that's used in every building, every road, how are you going to get over a river? It was put to me yesterday when we were looking at some of this stuff. How do you build a bridge? Well, we know that they don't want to build some of that stuff if it's in a Liberal seat or in Mayo, but you know, others will still want to build things. And you're about to implement a carbon tax that is going to send all of this manufacturing offshore, we're talking about hundreds of jobs are going to be lost, and it is going to increase the cost of absolutely everything. And that's just one industry. We also know that this uh, new gas supply issues are seeing investments go offshore, and th there is a high likelihood we're going to see blackouts this year. And this is something that's going to have ramifications for decades as investment is leaving this country. It is going elsewhere because those in the resources sector know that this government now cannot be trusted to put policy settings in place that allow them to safely invest in Australia and continue to grow our nation. 
Senator O'Neill. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. And I, I'm somewhat um, taken aback by the rhetoric of those who find themselves now in opposition. Um, it is an urgency motion, but I, I note that they had a decade in office, uh, which can only be described as a decade of wasted opportunities and warped priorities, that left Australians, who now this opposition seem to think they should stand up for, but left Australians with real, falling real wages, cost of living pressures and a trillion dollars of debt without an economic dividend to show for it. So um, any claim that they make in this argument about being good managers of money and good with the economy uh, has to be absolutely seen for what it is, a, a, an attempt to continue the con of the last 10 years. I rise in particular to speak to the motion put forward by Senator Hume. And let me just say for the record, despite the uh, great confusion uh, that's trying to be created and whipped up, drummed up by those in opposition, our policy position hasn't changed since we arrived in government. We support responsible, responsible cost of living relief because Australians need that and they need us as our government to respond to them. And we will focus on multinational tax avoidance in order to improve the budget bottom line and improve the outcomes for Australia, for our national economy and for the benefit of all Australians. Now, we'll do this in a calm, measured and considered way. And that is the way in which the Treasurer, Mr Chalmers, has been talking to the Australian people. And by his careful action, his careful words, his considered government, not the chaos, panic, deception and lies that have been uh, the hallmark of the last 10 years, Treasurer Chalmers has taken action to ensure that we've maintained our triple A credit rating and the rating agencies acknowledge that Labor's budget, the first one in December uh, last year, uh, sorry, in o October last year, uh, did not add to inflation. Now, the Albanese government has already passed a series of measures to improve the household budgets of everyday Australians who expect their government to respond. And that's what we've done. We've focused on responsible cost of living relief. And that's the kind of relief that doesn't put extra pressure on inflation. That's a really important thing. We understand that is a critical economic indicator that we have to really pay close attention to. Now, the Albanese government is and will deliver on critical things that impact people's lives in a way that will assist them to manage their budgets. Cheaper childcare. That's happening under the Albanese government. That is a cost of living measure that is responsible. Expanded paid parental leave, promised as part of our commitment leading into the election. Cheaper medicines, the most significant change in the cost of medicine since sem in 75 years. That changes pressure on families. We know that that's sensible assistance. Of course, more affordable housing, and my colleague uh, Minister Collins in the other house is introducing legislation to fulfil our commitments about housing because that is a massive problem that was created by 10 years of inaction by those opposite. And of course, wage growth. And we're just starting to hear now that companies that refuse to negotiate with unions around this country, refuse to negotiate on, on wages, are actually coming back to the table to bargain and wage growth will begin for Australian people. These things matter, and they don't occur in a vacuum. Inflation is a global issue. The war in the Ukraine, started by the brutal kleptocrat Vladimir Putin, has impacted supply chains right across the globe, particularly in relation to energy and food. Now, Australians understand that we did not create those challenges, but Australians also elected us to responsibly take on those challenges and address them as they present, and we are addressing those challenges. So I stand here very proud of a sensible government committed to addressing multinational tax avoidance to improve the bottom line for Australians and to provide them with 
non-inflationary uh, best possible help to manage their cost of living challenges. Thank you. Senator Brockman. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I too rise to make a contribution in this debate on cost of living and the legislated tax cuts. And I'll start in that position. These are legislated tax cuts. These are tax cuts which are in place at the moment. People are expecting them to be delivered, no matter who's in power. People are expecting to keep more of their own hard-earned money, no matter who is in power. And people are expecting, they're hoping, for a government that actually knows how to manage the economy, how to tackle the inflationary crisis, not to keep blaming solely the war in Ukraine for something that is much deeper than that, something that is a much more significant uh, uh, and embedded in the Australian economy than that. We are seeing currently an annualised CPI of around 7.8 per cent. In my home state in the last quarter of last year, that reflected a uh, CPI rate of 3.6 per cent. 3.6 per cent in one quarter. Annualised, very easy to see that that is that's not uh, that's not 7.8 per cent. That's well in excess of uh, 14 per cent. So we are in a situation where the average families out there, average mums and dads, are facing an extraordinary level of pressure on the family budget in terms of increasing petrol prices, 2.2 per cent rise in the December quarter, increasing electricity prices, 8.6 per cent in the December quarter, and forecast to further increase this year. Health services going up at 4.2 per cent per annum. And that is just the start of the pressure that's facing Australian families. Australian households. That's just the start, because we've also seen the fastest rate of um, uh, 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 cash rate rise uh, uh, in history. Uh, we've seen uh, cash rates, mortgage interest rates, rise at a faster rate under this government than we've ever seen before. Uh, and the track record on interest rates from the respective parties of government is pretty clear. I went through this last night. I'll, I'll just go back to some of the key points again. Uh, since the RBA has been publishing data since 1990, so that's a 32-year that's a period, that's a decent sample size, I think you'd all agree, we've seen, we've seen a, 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 a data set that shows us that the Labor Party has delivered the highest interest rate in that period of 17.5 per cent compared to the coalition's highest rate of 7.5 per cent. We've seen the coalition deliver average cash rates, so this is not mortgage rate, this is cash rate, so add 2 or 3 per cent for your mortgage, of 3.7 per cent, whereas under Labor the average rate has been 6.2. 6.2 versus 3.7 over a 32-year period. This is not just some statistical anomaly. This is not just some blip. This is uh, the comparison of a party of government, the coalition, the Liberal Party, that knows how to handle money, that knows how to manage the economy, that knows how to balance the needs of growth with the needs of uh, what society demands from government, uh, compared to the Labor Party, who simply does not. And they're demonstrating that again now. The, the things they cite in this place as examples of how they're providing uh, 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 relief to households are, quite frankly, very small, very limited in the number of households they help, and simply do not go to what people need. People need to see a government with a plan to actually tackle the inflationary crisis that we're currently under. These are not sustainable levels of inflation, and they are actually undermining wages of Australians. Real wage growth is plummeting. Have you noticed that those opposite 
never talk about real wage growth anymore because they know that with inflation where it is today, we won't see real wage rises for many, many years. Thank you, Senator Brockman. Uh, I, the question is that the motion um, moved now be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those, of, those against say no. no. I think the ayes have it. No. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. So the question is: the urgency motion is moved by Senator Hume be agreed to. The ayes should move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Askew as teller for the ayes and Senator Pratt as teller for the noes.
Order. There being 27 ayes and 33 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative.